This is a NASE Interlibrary Loan System training video. Today we will be covering the basics of searching in the Interlibrary Loan System. We will have a separate video that will cover the advanced searching functions, but today we're going to talk about basic searching and how you can change the display of your preliminary search results. We're going to be working today as the Ladybug school library and I am already logged into the system as the Ladybug, Ladybug interlibrary loan account. So to place a search all I need to do is come up here to the main box and put in my keyword search. The default for the system is a general keyword. I had been using something previously so that wasn't where we were set to. Um, but when you come to a new login, you will have general keywords set as your um, index. So all I have to do to place a search is put in my search term, and I'm going to search for creepy carrots. And this will bring back a set of results. When I do a search, it is in fact searching all of the databases that are connected to the ILL system. That includes the NUPAC Union Catalog, but it also includes the databases of many, many libraries in the state who have chosen to participate in the system through a Z-Target connection. So we are in fact searching many databases with many different records and many different cataloging choices that have been made for those records. And that does have an effect on what you're going to find when you do searches. So I gotten all my results back now for creepy carrots. I see up here I have 140 results for creepy carrots as a search. If I click modify search it's going to take me to the advanced searching screen which we're not going to do in this video but we will cover that in a separate training video. So what I'm seeing here is what's called a list display. That is the default in the system and this little icon that looks like a bulleted list um, is colored in red which tells me that it is the chosen option. If I want to switch the view, I can switch to what's called a gallery view by clicking on this little one that looks like a bunch of boxes, and that will make my display look like a bunch of boxes. All the same information is there, all the same functionality is there, I can save to lists, I can request the item, I can drill down to see the details of the records that are underneath, um, it just gives it to me in a different format. So I'm going to go back to the list view by clicking on list view and whichever of those things that I choose will in fact only apply to my session once I log out or I close my browser it'll go back to the defaults. The other things that you can change here in your display are the sorting uh, format. The default for the system is relevance, so your searches will automatically sort by relevance, but if you wish to switch them to something else, let's say you want to sort by author, you can do that by choosing a different option on the search sort indicator here. Um, there are in fact some titles in my search results that are in fact not creepy carrots um, that I was expecting it to be, so Aaron Reynolds' Creepy Carrots book is what I was thinking of, but there are a variety of other things here that came back um, when I did a general keyword search for those two words. So that is how your sort works. You can go back to relevance sorting just by choosing it. Like the, the display option, it will apply to this session. It will not apply globally to the login. The other thing that I can sort is I can sort, can if, the other thing I can choose is how my display results are grouped. And for that one, I'm going to do a different search. I'm going to search for Harry Potter, if I can figure out how to spell Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a case where there are many, many, many things and there are many, many, many formats. There's videos, there's audio books, there's regular books, there's ebooks, there's just everything. So it gives us a little bit better um, display for showing what the different um, the different result sets are. 
to group by. So it has now searched all of the different Z targets and I have, as I can see here, 6,590 results for Harry Potter. So I'm going to group these. My default grouping is merge and that means that the records are grouped by title, author, publisher, and date. So that will typically give you um, the exact same titles and the same publishers together will typically give you the um, different formats, videos and so forth separately, not always, it kind of depends a little bit on exactly how they were cataloged and what information is included there, um, but generally you're going to get your visual materials and your books separately um, in a merged grouping. Now I brought up this little cheat sheet note here by hovering over the little question mark next to group by because keeping track of what clustered is versus what merged is is confusing. So they have built in at Autographics this little tip sheet right here to tell you what you're dealing with. If you group by no grouping that is just going to give you strictly all of the individual records that came back one at a time. So you'll have pages and pages and pages of the individual things. On a search like Harry Potter that is going to be completely unmanageable. You can maneuver through them page by page using the page indicators at the bottom of the screen, but there's a lot and it is not a practical way to do this. Um, in a case where you have just a few records, it might be useful for you if you're trying to figure out which one is which, um, especially for cataloging purposes, to group them by no grouping so you can really see what all your choices are, um, but generally that is not going to be an ideal choice. Cluster is a grouping that gives you typically, and again it'll be driven a little bit by what the actual underlying records have in them, but typically the cluster is grouped just by title and author. So if you want to know, for example, if you can get Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in different formats, this is a display that'll tell you that, and the answer is yes. There's visual materials, there are video cassettes, there's spoken word, there's music recordings, there's films, there's DVDs, there's computer games, there's books, there's Blu-rays. All kinds of things are available uh, for that title. Now it may seem like well visual materials and video cassette and film and DVD aren't those kind of the same? Well the reason that they're not is because we are drawing from records from many different catalogs and different catalogs have chosen to include this material with different coding and different information. So what one catalog called a DVD another one might have called visual materials and consequently those come back separately. When you place an interlibrary loan request, there's underlying um, software that helps to match that stuff together and figure it out and put on your lender string all of the potential lenders for um, the thing that you have asked for, even if they've called it different things. In some cases that works more effectively than others, depending on, on the complexity of the cataloging records. Um, but it is in fact pulling back different things and will display the different things based on what's in the actual records in each individual local system. So I'm going to go back to merge, which as I said is the default grouping for the system. So we have relevant searching, merged grouping, and a list view, and that is the default for the system. So that's how you can control what you're looking at when you get your search results. So let's look now at some other ways that you can search. So when I got here initially, I just put in a search. I'm going to hit the home page button, which is the little house over here, to take me back to um, my basic empty screen so I can start all over. Everything I was doing is now wiped out and I can start fresh. So I'm going to do a search now for Dr. Seuss. So I'm just going to search Seuss. When I do that, I get 
lots and lots of things. And you'll notice here that it is still searching additional resources. It was searching, it had 120 left the first time it gave me an update, now it has three still left. If I wanna see everything that's there, I should wait until it's all finished so that I can get all of my results. It had some additional results found since it's last repainted the page. If this pops up, and it doesn't always, sometimes it does, it depends on the speed of the searching. You can click Add to Results, and it will give you any additional ones that there were, or you can say Ignore, and you won't get your additional search results. Your best bet is to wait until all your search results are back before you start maneuvering through your list. So, I have 8,860 results for the general keyword search of Seuss. That is a lot to manage. So I'm going to use the facet functions, which are these things over here on the left, to narrow in on what I'm actually looking for. So what I am actually looking for today is I want to find a book. So I'm going to click book under format facet over here. And I also want a book that is in Spanish. So I'm going to open the language facet. And when I just clicked book, it brought me down to 4,437 results. I also want it to be in Spanish. Now, if I just click Spanish, it's going to replace my book facet with a Spanish facet. But if I want both books and Spanish, what I need to do is press the control key on my keyboard and then click Spanish. And then what should happen is that I should now have two facets applied. I have book and I have Spanish. So I've got 31 things here in Spanish. And I can tell by looking at my numbers that, in fact, everything in the catalog in this search set. So it's not the entire catalog as it changed. If somebody added a book while I was doing this, that is not reflected. It is the search set I was working on that I am limiting using the facets. Everything in there was already in, was everything in Spanish was already a book because I had more books. Spanish has 31 things in it. I can clear either of these by unchecking it, or I could add an additional facet in, say the date. If I just click one of these, it will erase the Spanish in the book, but if I hit control click in the little box, it will add that third facet onto my search results. So it's filtering what I found using those facets to narrow in on a specific thing that I am interested in. So in the date range that I selected, which was anything since 2011, in Spanish and a book, there are six things. So that is what my search result now is. This is just books since 2011 with the word Seuss in them from the preliminary search, only book format, only in Spanish, and only from 2011. Now you'll notice in the language format, uh, facet, or in the language facet rather, that there are a couple of strange options. Blank has four things and undetermined has 16 things. That again relates to the fact that we are drawing cataloging records from a whole variety of sources. Some of them are more complete than others. In some cases there are records in catalogs and they might be temporary holding position records or they might be the actual records that library uses for their material. Um, that are not fully coded and there is no language indicator. So either it's a blank spot and the system can tell that where they ought to be getting language information, it's blank, or the information they're looking for to identify the language of the record is just not there, um, in which case it's undetermined. Might be in Spanish, might be in Chinese, might be in English, could be anything. They can't tell. So um, if you are, are looking for something and you're not finding it and you feel like it's got to be there, you might want to try the, some of these blank or undetermined facets um, to try to get the things that are really not ideal records. I would only do that in the case where you absolutely found nothing that you wanted 
from your basic search because those are going to be records that have some kind of an issue. Uh, but that's how you can filter your search. If I wanted to remove a facet, I can use these little buttons at the top as well. So let's say I want to get rid of the 2011 thing, I can click the X next to it and it will keep my search results with just the book facet and the Spanish facet. I could also remove all the facets with the remove all button. So that's how facets work for your searching. Um, you can clear your search using this little X up in the box. However, that does not clear your facets. It just erases whatever was typed in the box. Your best bet to get everything cleaned out is to go home again. When you click the home button, everything gets wiped out and you're starting fresh. It does take it a few seconds to kind of repaste everything or repaint everything, um, but that is your best bet to be sure that everything that was in place is gone so that you are not adding on um, things to your search that you do not intend. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about some options that you might be going, well, can I use this, which are wildcards and Boolean operators. You can, according to the autographics uh, support material, use wildcard characters of a question mark or a star. I would strongly recommend against doing so. Um, if you do that, you are not going to get everything that you should be getting because many of the Z3950 targets do not support those operators or they don't support them appropriately. Um, as an example, if I search cat, just cat as a general keyword, I am going to get lots and lots and lots of things back. Um, I get 26,000 and there's still 115 sources remaining. So 93,000 things come back for the search cat. If I do a search for dog, again, just a broad general keyword, anything with dog in it, I get 28,000 with 121 search resources still remaining. 129,000. So you get the idea. There's a lot out there on dogs and cats. But if I do a search for dog or cat, which should, in theory, bring back for me any record with dog and any record with cat, and not necessarily both, I am going to find that I get with all search resources completed, I only get 5,000 things. That is because the majority of the Z3950 targets do not support Boolean operators. The same is true with wildcard characters. So if you use them, you will get some results, but you will not get anywhere near all of your results. So you are much better off to just search uh, using the more broad functionality of dog, cat, basic stuff to get as many things back as you can get. Now, obviously, dog, cat is not a great search because you probably need something more specific, but it illustrates the issue. So the support materials do say you can do it, but we would strongly recommend against doing so uh, because it isn't really giving you what you want to see. So that is the basic overview of how you can search in the NAS Interlibrary Loan system. If you have questions about basic searching, please contact the NAS Help Desk at 603-271-2141 or send us an email at the address on your screen.